Hey everybody, today I'm going to be showing you how super quick and easy it is to install one of Super ATV's Rev1 clutch kits on a Polaris General. So let's jump right in. The first thing we're going to do is remove the vent tube off the clutch cover. We just want to loosen our band clamp up. And grab a hold of the tube. Wiggle it right off of there, tuck it back out of the way. Then we're gonna go through and remove all of the bolts securing the clutch cover to the inner clutch cover. Once all your hardware is removed, just go ahead and slide the clutch cover out. Then we're gonna go ahead and remove the bolt out of the primary as well as the secondary. And then we're gonna take our puller, slide it into the primary, pull the primary off, and then pull the secondary off. This machine's equipped with Walker Evan shocks. We're gonna lay it down out of the way in order to get the secondary clutch off. If you're running factory shocks, you're not gonna have to do this. Once you've done that, we can go ahead and slide the secondary clutch off. And we'll go ahead and take this over to the bench and sit it down. And we'll take our belt off. And we're just gonna hang it right here, exactly how it came off. And we'll take a primary clutch removal tool, thread it right up into the primary. We'll get it hand tight. Then we'll grab our 27 millimeter socket. And we'll just go ahead and tighten it up. Once you get it tight, it'll just pop right off. Go ahead and remove our tool from it. We got our clutch compressor tool. You can pick one of these up from superatv.com. You'll just take your primary, sit it down on there like that. Take this piece, put it down there, and we're just gonna thread this nut down. Let's get it just like that. We'll take our tool, put it on here. What we're doing is we're just gonna take the load off the spring, then we'll take a 10 millimeter socket and remove all these bolts. Once you remove all the bolts, it's just gonna drop down just like that. So now what we're gonna do before we do anything else, as you can see, our clutch has markings on it from the factory. So we're gonna take a paint marker. And we're gonna make our own mark as well. We'll just make one right here, right here, and right there. That way we know when we put this thing back together, all these marks need to line up. So now that we have it marked, we're gonna go ahead and remove our tool. Just take this right here off. We'll set that aside, and we'll take our factory spring and go ahead and remove it. You wanna make sure that this bushing right here is intact and make sure it's in good shape still. And this is the time to go around and all around inspect the clutch. So what we're gonna do is before we go any farther, we're gonna blow this entire clutch out. You can tell this one, it's, it's really dirty. And just be careful when you're doing so, make sure that you wear safety glasses. You know, you don't want any of this dust or dirt and debris getting up in your eyes. So now we're gonna go through and remove all of the factory arms. We'll do this by removing the nut off of this bolt. Sometimes they get stuck. That's one of the reasons that we're upgrading today for this customer. Having issues with this clutch, doing weird stuff, not shifting properly. Once these arm bolts get corroded, like this one right here is pretty bad. It's not wanting to push out. What you can do, if you can't wiggle it out, you can get an Allen wrench. This one right here should be good. You can just push that bolt right out. That's pretty bad right there. This machine doesn't have a ton of miles on it. And that's what we've seen. You know, we went from this style, you know, this is your OE bolt to this, the nitride coating on these bolts that keeps it from corroding like that. So that's gonna keep your arms free. That's gonna keep your clutch functioning for a lot longer and better. You'll just take a little piece of sandpaper and run it through them holes. You don't have to sand it down or anything like that. Essentially, you're just cleaning that corrosion, rust, you know, build up. Anything that may be in there, you just want to get that out. And I just kind of like to pull it back and forth a couple times. And then obviously after you sand it, you definitely want to blow it out again. You don't want any of that sand or grit that comes off of sandpaper in there. So we'll go ahead and blow this one out. So we've got it blown out now. We're gonna take our arm. We're just gonna slide it right in place of where the factory one was. And you just wanna make sure that that bolt glides through there. You want it to go through there nice and easy. 
You don't want there to be any resistance whatsoever like there was on the factory when we just removed. So now we're gonna go ahead and thread our nut on. And this next step here is one of the most crucial steps of the installation. This is where we see a lot of our customers having issues is due to the over tightening of the hardware. So what I do is I just take a ratchet with a socket on it and then another ratchet with my other socket, the Allen, the Allen socket. And we're just gonna tighten these up. And we're not gonna tighten them up to the point to where they're super tight. What a lot of a lot of what we've seen with issues with these clutch kits isn't an issue with the clutch kit itself, it's an installation issue. Because what happens is, when you tighten this down, it's gonna squeeze this tower together. So that's gonna make it so the arm's not gonna move freely. And now see, this is exactly what you want. Our bolt moves freely, has a little side to side play, and then our arm just glides on the bolt. Now if the bolt moves too, that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. So we can hold onto the bolt and it glides there and it'll actually spin that bolt too. So that's the ideal, you know, that's exactly what you need to do whenever you're installing this clutch kit. So I want to show you all a little something here. What happens when you run your machine in high gear all the time, you know, at low speeds. It looks like on this clutch, it's been ran in high gear a lot at low speeds. If you can tell the color difference between here to here, that belt's been riding up here, getting real hot. You can actually feel some of that belt material. So what we're gonna do to help this issue is we're gonna take a piece of Scotch-Brite. We're just gonna go around on these sheaths. And we're just gonna polish them up real nice. You don't wanna use anything super abrasive on your sheaths or your clutch. You need to make sure when you're doing this, you're following the contours. You know, keep your hands flat just like if you were sanding in a car. So now we got our clutch all cleaned up. We scrubbed it with a piece of Scotch-Brite, and then took a little bit of brake clean, brake clean the sheaths off, you know, just making sure there's no belt dust, residue, anything like that. Took a clean rag, wiped it down. So now we're gonna take our new primary spring out of the kit. The packaging will be labeled PCS for primary clutch spring. We'll drop it in there. So we're gonna find our pink mark. We got pink, pink, pink. We're gonna line it up, just like that. We're gonna take our compressor, sit it on there, grab our nut. Get it on there. We're gonna take the tool here. We're just gonna spin it all the way down until our holes line back up. Again, just make sure that your mark lines up the entire time. Make sure you get all your holes lined up. Put our bolts back in. Just want to go through them. We want to fully tighten them off. It's always a good idea to go from tower to tower, tighten these bolts down. When I say tower, this is a tower. That's a tower, and that's a tower. This clutch has three towers on it. Once you got them all tight, just go back through, double check them all. So now we're gonna remove the primary clutch off the compressor tool. There you go. Your primary's done. Now it's time to grab the secondary. So it looks like our secondary has some wear on the sheaths as well. So we're gonna wanna go ahead and clean that all up. But we'll go ahead and show you all how to take it apart first. So we're just gonna flip our secondary upside down. Slide it onto the compressor. Slide this on here. Same thing. Set it up the same exact way, except we're going from the back side this time. Then we'll just wanna put a little tension on this. So now this is a really important part here. You wanna make sure you don't have an old, worn out junk socket that you're trying to take these out with because a lot of times they will strip. So what we do if we can't get them loose immediately is we'll take some heat and we'll just heat right around here. You don't wanna get it too hot, but you know, just heat it up enough so it'll free up them threads. So we're gonna go ahead and try this one. I like to put all my weight down on it, 
Okay, that one's coming loose. See, it's just real tight. You know, they get corroded and nasty and they have Loctite on them from the factory. So sometimes they can be a pain to get out. I highly recommend if you strip it in the least bit to go to your local Polaris dealership and get new hardware. Make sure your socket's all the way down in there whenever you go to start turning. Again, put your body weight down on it. Make sure your socket's straight. So once all the bolts are removed out of here, we're gonna continue to decompress the spring. One thing you wanna make sure of is that you have an X here on your factory helix and then an X here. If you don't, we're just gonna go ahead and make a mark and a mark to be safe. So we're gonna remove our tool, then we'll remove our helix. We're gonna go ahead and pick this straight up as well. What we're gonna do is, just because we wanna keep everything exactly how it was, Whenever we go to put this back together, we're gonna line this dot that we're gonna put on top of here, on the spider. We're gonna put a little dot right there. We're gonna line that dot up with the dot that we just put on the X over here. So that way everything lines up, it'll slide right back together exactly how it was. We don't wanna change anything. So now we're gonna remove our secondary spring. And then what we're gonna to wanna to do is go in here and blow out all the debris. As you can tell, this clutch is super dirty in here, so we're gonna blow it all out. Now that our clutch is all blown out, cleaned up, we're gonna take our secondary spring. It'll be labeled SCS in the packaging in the Rev1 clutch kit. We're just gonna drop it straight down in there. Then we're gonna take our spider cage here. We're gonna sit it right back down how it was. Like I said, you know, we put the dot on it to line it up. And you'll just wanna make sure that this spring seats in there as well. You'll kinda of hear it click. It'll go up inside of that spider. So we're gonna line that pink dot up to that pink dot. And then we're gonna line this pink dot up to this pink dot. Get our compressor, drop it on there. Get our nut. Press it down. And then we're gonna go ahead and tighten this up, compress that spring, and then we'll put our hardware back in it. You wanna make sure that your helix is staying lined up. It'll actually have to fit down inside of the back side of the secondary. Sometimes it can be a little bit tricky. Just wanna get it lined up. And you wanna make sure your holes are lined up as well. See right there, our dots lined up, our axes lined up, and we're gonna go ahead and reinstall these screws. If you have screws that don't have any Loctite on them, you'll definitely wanna go ahead and apply a little bit of Loctite to each of the threads. Once our hardware's tight, we'll just go ahead and remove our clutch compressor tool. So now we're gonna grab our secondary clutch, as well as our belt. Remember, to, remember we laid it out exactly how it came off. So now we're gonna go ahead and slide the secondary on. Keep this belt up pretty high. When you grab your secondary bolt, you'll just wanna apply a little bit of Loctite to it. Nothing too crazy, just a little bit, just like that. We'll go ahead and thread that into the secondary. Then we're gonna grab our primary clutch, loop it through the belt. Get it slid into place, and we'll grab our bolt. And we'll go ahead and tighten down the primary as well as the secondary. And if you are running a Walker Evan shock or anything that has a canister that gets in your way, you'll wanna go ahead and reinstall that. Reinstall the clutch cover, the vent tube, and that's how super easy it is. Install Super ATV's Rev1 clutch kit to a Polaris General. For more information on this clutch kit, or any of Super ATV's great products, feel free to give us a call at 855-743-3427 or check us out online at superatv.com. Thanks for watching, and we'll catch you next time.